Welcome to A Comparison of Scale, Macro, Micro, and Nano, presented by the Southwest Center for Microsystems Education. At one time or another, everyone has asked the question, how big is the universe? I know I've asked it many times. Trying to develop the answer can be overwhelming because, as we have discovered, there really is not an answer right now. The size of the universe is unknown. However, the size of objects within the universe is known. These objects are constantly being studied, measured, and compared. These comparisons are a means of invoking some sense of scale as to how the big the universe could really be. For example, the Milky Way is one of billions of galaxies. Our sun is one of several hundred billion stars within the Milky Way. There are over 50,000 billion billion stars. In fact, there are more stars in the universe than there are grains of sand on our planet. Our sun is considered a middle-sized star. Giant stars are as much as 10 times larger than our sun. However, when we compare the size of the sun to Earth, the sun is approximately 109 times larger in diameter, meaning that 1.3 million Earths could fit inside the sun. For years, astronomers have explored the universe looking for hints as to how big it really is. At the same time, other scientists have been exploring how small things are and how small something has to be before it goes beyond the reach of manipulation and measurement. In these explorations, another whole universe has been discovered, but one on a much smaller scale. Instead of objects being measured in kilometers and light years, objects are measured in micrometers and nanometers, and even in the number of atoms. Before we start talking about scale, we need to talk a little bit about terminology. The sun is big, an ant is small. These are relative statements. Big and small relative to what? Yes, an ant is small relative to the size of a human being. However, relative to a human hair, an ant is actually very large. The comparative size of an object in relative terms, such as big, small, and huge, can be illustrated in a scale. In this scale, the ant is the smallest object. However, in the bottom scale, the ant is the largest object. Additional comparison scales could be, could be created at both ends of these two scales, illustrating even smaller and larger objects. Therefore, we can say that scale is the relationship between what is being compared and how that relationship is represented numerically or visually. So, take a look at these two objects here. We have a red blood cell and an ant. In these pictures, they look close to the same size, but we all know better. In reality, the ant is approximately 7 millimeters in length, and red blood cells are approximately 7 micrometers in diameter, which is actually 1,000 times smaller than the ant. Today's manufacturers are now making electrical and mechanical components, devices, and systems in a variety of sizes from macro to, to nano. This figure shows a comparison of these components. We have a standard light bulb, which is about 8 millimeters or 3 inches in diameter. In the middle is a set of gears with gear teeth measuring 8 micrometers wide. Therefore, the gears themselves are, could be 100 micrometers wide or even 50 micrometers wide. And then we have a micro-sized cantilever with a nano dot that measures 50 nanometers in diameter. In commercial and residential electrical applications, components such as switches, light bulbs, and fans are micro-sized objects, objects that are greater than 100 micrometers. Airbag actuation sensors, shock sensors for computers, tilt sensors for computers, and implantable drug delivery systems are micro-sized objects, objects that are less than 100 micrometers but larger than 100 nanometers. Biomolecular sensors for proteins and antigens carbon nanotubes as connectors, and gene analysis devices are nano-sized objects, objects between 100 nanometers and 1 nanometer. 
So what scale did you see here? How big is the honeybee? Is it macro, micro, or nano? A honeybee is approximately 12 millimeters long, which is greater than 100 micrometers. Therefore, it is in the macro scale. What about the human hair? A human hair is 60 to 100 micrometers in diameter. Therefore, it is in the micro scale. And the red blood cell? How big is it? As we said before, a red blood cell averages 7 micrometers in diameter, which is between 100 nanometers and 100 micrometers, therefore it too is in the micro scale. Now last but not least, what about a DNA molecule? How wide is it? A DNA helix is 0.002 micrometers wide, or 2 nanometers wide. Therefore, it is in the nanoscale. When working in microsystems technology, one needs to know the differences between objects manufactured in the macro scale and those manufactured in the micro scale. Compared to macro scale devices, micro sized devices are much smaller, much lighter, more energy efficient and constructed with fewer materials. In equivalent applications, like a macro pump versus a micro size pump, micro exceeds macro in reliability, efficiency, selectivity, response time, and energy consumption. So what are microsystems? Microsystems are miniaturized integrated systems in a small package or more specifically, micro-sized components working together as a system and assembled into a package that fits on a pinhead. For example, this image shows three micro-sized blood pressure sensors on the head of a pen. Microsystems are microscopic, integrated, self-aware, standalone products that can sense, think, communicate, and act. Some systems can do all of these things, plus even scavenge for power. Here are just a few applications of micro-sized devices. We have inkjet print heads, as shown here in the graphic. Automobile applications. There are micro-sized components on your car that measure flow rates, tire and oil pressures. We have crash sensors and our airbag deployment sensor. There are many biomedical applications, such as drug delivery, diagnostics, and therapeutics. There are optical applications, such as digital light processing and digital mirror devices. Communications include several different types of micro-sized devices, um, such as switches, and then we have R, what are called RF MEMS, radio frequency MEMS, and these devices are being used for digital communications and switching mass storage systems for data storage. For aerospace, we have leak detection, vibration sensors, positioning sensors, and navigation. Now that you have had a taste of micro, let's talk about nano. Nanotechnology, or more specifically nanoscience, has been around for quite a long time. Nanoscience is concerned with the study of the property of materials in the nanoscale. Physicists and biologists have been studying nano devices such as cells, molecules, and atoms for years, and in some cases, centuries. Nanotechnology is the application of nanoscale science, engineering, and technology to produce novel materials and devices. Nano is a lot of things. It is anything that is less than 100 nanometers in any dimension, regardless of how it is made. It is anything made by specifically placing materials atom by atom or molecule by molecule. It is anything made from the bottom up, one atom at a time. And it is anything with unique properties due to its small size. This picture provides us with a comparison of micro and nano. This is a scanning electron microscope image of a human hair. On top of the hair is a nanowire, which is about 100 nanometers in diameter. Inside the loop created by the nanowire are four digital micrometers used in projection systems. Each mirror is a pixel and can tilt at a rate of 30,000 times per second. 
In addition to the actual size of the object, fabrication is another primary difference between microtechnology and nanotechnology. Nanotechnology uses what is referred to as the bottom-up approach to fabrication. Microtechnology uses the top-down approach. The bottom-up approach means that a structure is made by building it atom by atom or molecule by molecule from the bottom up. Each individual atom or molecule is manipulated or controlled for correct placement. This figure shows four stages in the assembly of a quantum corral. This figure shows the final assembly of a corral that has been made by placing 48 iron atoms in a circle, one at a time, onto the surface of gold. The top-down approach used in microtechnology selectively removes material until the desired structure is achieved. In semiconductor and some MEMS processes, one applies a pattern, selectively etches away exposed material, and ends up with a circuit or component. This graphic shows how microcantilevers are initially incorporated into a block of layered materials. The cantilevers are in red, then we have a sacrificial layer in green underneath the cantilever. In microtechnology fabrication, the green layer, the sacrificial layer, will be removed to release the cantilevers, and once that material is removed, the cantilevers are now suspended over the substrate and allowed to move. Semiconductors have evolved over the years with technological advances in the deposition of materials and the selective removal of materials through the photolithography and etch processes. Deposition layers have become thinner and etched widths have become smaller. A deposited gate oxide layer used to be 20 microns or larger. Now it can be as thin as 1 nanometer. Gate widths, patterned and subsequently etched, have shrunk from more than 1 micron dimensions to less than 50 nanometers. As devices shrink, the necessity to use nano-sized objects when constructing micro-sized devices increases. One of the greatest applications for micro-nano devices is the biomedical field. The overlap between microbiology and microsystem feature sizes makes integration between the two possible. Devices fabricated for the medical field are referred to as biomems. Examples of biomems include drug delivery systems with nano-sized needles and micro-sized pumps, diagnostic arrays that use microcantilevers, and nano-coatings of monolayers to capture nano-sized particles. We also have a device called a lab on a chip, which is basically a micro-sized laboratory for analyzing liquid samples such as blood, urine, and sputum. So what have we learned? A macro-sized object can be millions of times bigger than a micro-sized object. The micro-scale is a thousand times bigger than the nano-scale. In macro-scale, the Earth is small when compared to the Sun, but huge when compared to a baseball. In the micro nanoscales, an 8 micron wide red blood cell is huge compared to a 2 diameter carbon nanotube. The discovery of nano sized particles has made an already big universe even bigger. Distances are now measured in lengths from light years to nanometers. Modern technologies are taking advantage of the wide range of sizes in order to improve existing processes and to develop new ones. For even more information on scale and for some engaging activities, be sure to download the Comparison of Scale Learning Module from the SCME website under Educational Materials. Thank you for viewing this presentation produced by the Southwest Center for Microsystems Education.